Okay, we're recording today, which is a good thing. We need to get some content out here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. I gotta watch these eyebrows. Last video, my this one eyebrow was going somewhere else. It was ridiculous. I noticed that when I was editing. I'm going to do the Casa Coco. I am so sick of looking at this fucking video on my computer. Forever now it's been on here. I am going to do that today. Oh, I'm so sick of seeing this video. I got to do it. For 46. Oh my God, my ADD. Oh, my ADD. Oh, God. God help me. Okay. Welcome back, y'all. I am Lance B, and I'm reacting to the internet historian, The Cost of Concordia. Finally, I've been, I've had this video on my computer now for about, I think, over six months. And I was going to react to it six months ago. That never transpired. But today, we're, we're, we're going to do this today. I, I am bound and determined with my ADD, we're doing this today. Damn it, because I want to know what happened to the ship. So I've been trying to not to watch other people's reactions on it because I see so many people reacting to it. And it's, I guess it's an older video. But anyway, I, I really want to know what this is about. And I love Internet Historian. He tells a great story and um so yeah let's get right into it because i only have a certain amount of battery life and i gotta watch and this is about 46 minutes so to let you know sit back get yourself a snack well get yourself a snack first get yourself a drink whatever time of day it is have a little cocktail smoke a little smoke smoke if you need to grab a popcorn a pop or soda, depends on what part of the country you're part of, that is, you say whatever verbiage. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, and, and whatever pronoun you feel comfortable with, enjoy. Let's have a good time. This video, we're on this channel, we're all about having a good time, good vibes. I joke a lot, don't take me seriously. Some people in the comments... I guess don't know my sense of humor and try to read me like oh this and this and that and the other and try to itemize shit like they don't they take me so seriously I joke around a lot I might have dry sense of humor but I do joke around it's, I'm not serious so let's all relax have a good time and let's get right into it Hey, all you little fucking nerds watching online. We like to fuck in the ass. X-rated. Woo. Yeah. yeah, come on, baby. Oh. Yeah, get into it. <sighs> the Costa Concordia. Ship of dreams. It's been eight years. I can still smell the buffets from their five restaurants. The casino and three-story theater had hardly been used. Ah, the gym, the day spa, the sheets in her 1,500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. <gasps> Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. And you could tell. God. You could really tell. I better not get copyrighted for this bootleg Titanic jingle. Like it was just a few years ago. Historian. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome, 
and we were making our way to Savona. It was day two of our seven day journey. But that ship, I, she was cursed. Oh my god. <coughs> oh my god. Period, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. A bad omen. But I'm not the superstitious type. I Nothing am. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January. Jesus 2012. Christ. On the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic, on a ship that's also only safety rated for two compartment flooding. Pause that. not when you have... This is the reason why I know a lot of people, if you're into cruises, more power to you. I don't want to be on... I've been on a cruise before and I'm not a big fan due to the fact, A, if that bitch goes down, I'm shark food. I've seen Jaws. I seen the Meg. I'm a pretty healthy boy. My ass will be gobbled up. No, no shit. B. The last few years before the Pando, there were a lot of cases of cruises. People getting sick because of the food because the people weren't properly. Probably washing their goddamn hands, probably taking a shit, and then gonna start cooking the meals. I like this is the reason why I prepare my own food. I don't really go out. I don't eat fast food. I don't trust people preparing my food unless it's me. That's just how I am anymore. I used to eat. I you know I did eat out in restaurants more often back in the day. I I'm just very cautious about. I've seen enough. Gordon Ramsay, Kitchen Nightmares, and Hell's Kitchen, and all that. Well, Kitchen Nightmares. Uh, once you see that, you will have PTSD after watching that. Because you will never let anyone else... You would never want to go out again. That is the reason why. There's two reasons why. A, a shark bait. B, getting food poisoning. You'll probably get dysentery. I'm not down for that. Hell no. Play five star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. Oh god, there he is. There he is. I mean, look at that faccia brutta. Look at that faccia, that faccia de merde. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. He knows exactly what to do in case okay. of an emergency. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vernemont, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. How's this man of... I've got a good feeling about this. So let's set the scene. A captain of anything. It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides. Drinks at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician oh. is setting up for his show. And the a ship magician is setting up for a little detour. It's I guess they gotta work too. Isolates. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Scutino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady, Dominica Samorton. Remember this face because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scutino eats his dinner oh. and socializes for a little while. Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the beach. He walks like a douche it's time for that sail by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just fifteen. Why does this guy look like a used car salesman? This captain. And how are they going to determine? He looks like a swindler. Well, of course, the captain is going to. I won't trust him with shit. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman. Jacob Rusliben. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's his first time steering a what? massive ship, and he's very excited. At least we what? think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well at all. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. 
Now, don't be confused by these numbers. They're just the degrees on a compass. He should be working at Taco Bell, not be steering a ship. And calls former captain Mario Palombo. Multi-million dollar ship. They chat about the safe distance to Gilio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the queue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving... Oh, you're just telling secrets outside the schoolyard? Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Language barrier. <coughs> because at this point, the captain says, 325. But the helmsman relays, 315. So the first officer intervenes, and he goes, no, 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 335. Which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. Wow. The helmsman confirms, 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. However, the captain should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing I love how this bitch has her feet up, doing her, filing her, doing her nails. The, ship so the captain then turns to the second so officer and instructs him Look to like the left wing. Diva. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. Okay, okay, I kind of thought that, but I never knew for the sure. Moon starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct... Rocks were direct. actually underwater, okay. Scatino immediately... Oh shit, the that's right! Away. Three, three, that's five. right! Not enough. Oh the shit! Yells, 340. The captain yells, 350! Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made uh -huh. this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. <laughs> I was about to say oversteer, understeering. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order yeah. of 350, right now the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the Wow, and on, dude. It's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments, oh every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350, starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard okay. 10, okay. starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Port 10. But the helmsman only gets to port 5 before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port, undoing the swing. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port! The second officer yells, we're gonna hit! Collision. Oh, 
level. I, <laughs> I know they're Italian, but really, with all the pa pasta and olive oil and oh, express not the espresso. That's a shame. That's some penne pasta. My God, that's going. These poor Italians. Downtown, Nordtown. I was wondering what that meant, Ed Tim, Ed Tim, Ed Tim. Seems I never win. Gonna drink or buy yourself? Somebody has to. The speech the text. Man who's good at text the speech, folks. I mean. I'm many things. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts in thousands of servers in dozens of countries across the globe. And just like that, she was gone. <laughs> The only thing she left was a calling card. Sometimes when you follow a case, it follows you back. NordVPN can protect my online data. But who can protect me from myself? When they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found his password spread all the way down the block. In a perfect world, we'd all use NordVPN. But I guess this isn't that kind of story. I took the brakes off my car. A man like me never really learned how to stop. Shut the fuck up. I took the steering wheel out too. Shut the I let the road take me where I'm supposed to be. That's right, Toots. Your husband's dead. Merry Christmas. Go to nordvpn.com slash internet stories for a huge discount on two years play. <coughs> Add uh, The ship hits rocks on the port side. A 53 meter gash opens up in the hull and thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, is panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is out, trapped and terrified. There's confusion across Oh my the god, that poor woman. Shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical Are those Sim assess damage. Sims as he's using as the other. Slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 29 seconds. 22 Ooh. seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, the water pumps too. Oh Every my god. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the final position of the rudder. You see what I'm talking about? Why I'm going cruises? Lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard. Plunged into absolute darkness. Oh my god. A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, oh it tore open freak. three watertight compartments. Out. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six, more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. These main generators give power to the whole ship. From propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless sinking cage. A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage, and it caused a huge... Oh, the girl got out, hopefully. ...as passengers are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone yeah. up. Everything is fine. There's no need for vests. Please uh, return to your cabins. <laughs> the emergency generator yeah, starts. Yeah, no. All of the watertight doors close, except for door 12, which is jammed. The captain calls Pilot, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes! Bitch! Water. You can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps. What do you, you know. think? 
In the theatre, the whole metric box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd, further increasing panic. On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to I hope that girl got out. A panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments 5, 6 and 7 are flooded. Announcements are made. The captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault which is currently under control, we're currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation and will inform you of developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing My Heart Will Go On. And it's very much not helping. Oh my situation. god, you must put one thing on top of another. Can we. Uh, these poor people. That they're assessing damages and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sail. Anyway, around this time, <laughs> the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because okay. we want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. A panic yes. passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. This is a, I the love the footage of all the plates just sliding over. This is something I normally don't see. And the police call the harbour master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. Do you hear that, man? Point, that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Passengers what? begin going to muster stations on their own initiative. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio what says, is that? This I think that's captain. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells Thank them you, that Ambrosio. We just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been oh my. going on? About 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I've got to go. The harbour master is suspicious. He says to his superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat yeah, to the Yeah, thank you, intuition. Another problem. The fan on the emergency... Please Lord, no, this captain is in denial. Pilon is in denial. has to turn up. the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks. And he, it's a, he's in danger. Like, is it still flooded? Yes. Yes, it is. Bitch! The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The Thank calls you. Again. Finally, he says, the you get, "This captain's getting my blood boil." I already have high blood pressure. This man is pissing me off. The harbor master asks if he needs help. Not yet, bitch. When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three yes! Blood, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad, and they are not going to improve. The coast guard orders every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges. No <laughs> he said this despite knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered lives. Most yeah. passengers at the front are <laughs> aren't listening to this nonsense. <laughs> and they're busy to out how to abandon the ship. Bang, 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 bang. Local television Jesus is Christ. The story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Uh, Captain, uh. the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after yeah. no response, he yeah. orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain Thank says, you. No, stay. We'll leave. Bitch! So what do we do? General emergency? The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandoned ship. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The situation is under control. Pause that. These... You go make one announcement right before. It's just a blackout. Next announcement. 
oh, y'all need to get the f*** this ship. This shit's going down. So the people... How is this man a captain of anything? I won't even let him... On a dinghy. What the f fuck is going on here? Is that what it... Use your words. Calm down. Because this is bullshit. Because you... First of all, you're going to hire someone who's going to be steering your sh huge multi-million dollar ship he at a rock bottom price? Did you not check his credentials? Oh, hey, uh, you want to work on it. Okay, uh, have you ever done this before? Have you ever been on a cruise line before? Have you ever steered a ship? No, okay, yeah, it says that right here. You just were a painter. Uh, um, I don't see shit here that you have credentials, but you know what? You look like you have a nice face. Uh, we'll let you, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hire your ass. Yeah, why not? What, uh, we'll just charge you, we'll pay you, like, you know, five dollars an hour. We'll let you do it. Whatever. God damn, this is, this is the most craziest clusterfuck of a situation I've, Play. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. Pilon, honey, you need to get out of there. Already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, oh, creating an uneven center of gravity. It just, it, and it begins heavily lifting starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. Wow. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats These poor people. the harbour master that the ship has run They just want to have a vacation. So the harbour master asks the captain about it and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to maneuver it onto the shore. They know he's lying. The captain then says to bottom up the star. <laughs> oh my god. So they I, I don't the even want to laugh because this is so. Effectively rendering them useless. The deputy wow. of Furio, Mario Pellegrino, and tobacco wow. shop Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbor. They watch the scene unfold. Pellegrino. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore. The deputy mayor Rossi. takes the initiative tobacco. and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take more rest. than the captain, but not He's... before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priority. Dimitri Christidis and Silvia Coronica. He's going to try to. The maitre d' and some more can both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still. So that way, you don't. People don't know you're the damn captain. The That's the only reason why you're going to change, change out into a suit. Bell was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. He knew he fucked up, so and he's going to try to be like on the bridge, one of the crew, the like one of the passengers, to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now. This guy's more of a fucking then, captain. The ship's black box this stops is bullshit. working. Apparently, there are technical problems with it. That means from here, Jesus things Christ, are going to be another thing things. on top of it. It's a like an onion, just layer after the layer. Line. But they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return to pick this them up. This is horrible. Oh my goodness. This is horrible. Yes. To Monica. You're not allowed to make a film right, movie. I'm allowed. I'm allowed. Who say you are? A Bitch! A faster model. Mind your fucking business. You should mind your goddamn man. How about that? Now the Coast Guard Dumb bitch. The captain, because he's just learned 
that the captain has a bad You ain't gonna film. You shouldn't be filming. Oh, Who in the fuck are you? No, actually, I do the fuck I want. I'm gonna film with the fuck I want. I'm a club. But now that I'm on board, I may as well head back to shore. DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. Thank you. The captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and Why would he? watched other people do the rescuing. Exactly, he didn't do shit before. A rescue before. boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbour. He speaks to the police. He doesn't he want the everyone else on the that rock to know he's the captain. And cry to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes I'll to the harbour. I'll you your fucking tears. To receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the taxi driver to drop kick his ass back in that fucking ocean. Cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cab, the thirty-second cab ride right to the Bahamas Hotel. He only asked me where he could buy Hotel. a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> but then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What and a bold faced liar. Look at the sky. We were the last to leave the ship. All they said was they rescue us. Look at this douchebag. Douchebag. South Korean couple was found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slept through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. What? The How you sleep through that? How you sleep through that? How you sleep through that? In the end, 32 oh people God. died. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia was the largest... Pause it. That's bullshit. That is such bullshit. People died because of your incompetence, ego. You shouldn't have no bitch on the with you. And everyone else that was not doing their job on that fucking. I don't even know what they, what do they call that. I, I can't even think of the. Were they still the ship? I can't even think about it right now. That's bullshit. While the captain jumps, changes his clothes so he could be amongst the people, so he could get on, uh, be safe, save his, save his ass. Socio, sociopath, right there. This is this is some grade A bullshit right here. Just halfway through the fucking video and my blood pressure is right here. I'm it's right here. Okay, just calm down. It's just, just calm down. Play. Cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Millions of dollars down the toilet. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Senseless. This is senseless. Be some of these cruise companies want to cut corners. Look at this. You spend millions of dollars and here you go. Here you go. I cost, I'm sure, 
millions of dollars to but this isn't the end. bring that ship it's back just up. A halfway point. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and that the captain abandoned ship like a coward. But there's a whole world <coughs> yeah. of spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. Oh, they are. oh, what, what you... The deets. Internet historian, how do you make me cry one second and the one make me laugh the next? How do you do that to me? Loot box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just I was a wondering, is this the same? The is this another ad? Change, change. This I get what he's was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of Very gamers true. prepared to sneak by authorities. Very gamers. In the hot zone. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. High-end liquor, expensive furniture, dining oh, sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous... You know the people from Gilio are like, we ain't gonna get money from this company. We're gonna it was get our money back through get gank of their of shit. Fuck off bell. Even the server admin. Who does still bail? Fuck off bell. <laughs> <laughs> Why? The company contracted to refloat the Concordia was spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the. Are you ship. serious? A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing, and thieving, and pinching. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate <laughs> items and found their way pension. to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, and postcards, pension. and cabin that access part cards to became me. highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as "fire to collect." Are you serious? Bitters, eBay pulled the plug. Is that what we do, people? Is that what we do now? Try to make a buck. I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. Dominica Simone. Is it? That was a close one. Dominica. There was speculation that I just she was on the bridge that evening because Jesus she is the captain's mistress. Intense media speculation Ugh. reports that her presence. These two assholes look like they're made for each other. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were. Just friends. Although she did later admit <laughs> to the media that she found him <laughs> handsome. And how could you not? You tell really fucking precious when you smile. But she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe they want to know I have something with him. It's more interesting. It's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Miss Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Uh, everyone. Oh. And took several interviews. Oh, oh as look! The pressure mounted upon her, oh, she this began making know. ominous threats to Scatina, saying he must confess and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. Uh, spicy. In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. How's the huh? battery doing? Not and what bad. was that package? Drugs, apparently. So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scudino really? was for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no drugs were big head. found. Big head head. Oh, right, a helicopter. No neck Sir Morton commented on it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we get here? Oh, right, sex with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Simorton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup. <laughs> the jig was cooking up, bra. But they continued to Is that a Jeffree Star Simorton makeup mostly bag? Faded from he international is. attention until she was told like to it. appear before the court to present witness testimony. 
The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, she admitted it. See, yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. Sentimental. She was indeed the captain's lover. What is up? The Trump captain's nation. lover. City, no, she I'm his wife with C. Mortan. Oh my god! She and Scatino had been having an affair for hey, several King weeks. Star. She also said that on the night you she ordered, King she Star. didn't have a ticket, ticket please. and didn't need to Ugh. pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Naturally, she gave another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I died because the first time I died in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today what? I died the second time because... Yeah, people, people actually people died, bitch. ...find out something that I tried to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. <laughs> It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada, and interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, it's sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her. Uh, Who gives a shit with this? Oh God, God, not again. Not again. Oh my God. Dear God Almighty. <laughs> I'm with you in the story. Several civil suits oh my were God. quickly lodged against Costa Crociere, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop. I was wondering if it was Carnival. Yeah. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, and loved ones. Either they allowed him to yeah. divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary what? that the ship uh, was uh, taking uh, at the time. Oh, you don't want to take ownership because you don't want to pay. Not only taking, but the time the, the ship Today, was... Junior? Claiming that the ship was not approved <laughs> to deviate from the route. But that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route, and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. 11,000 euros, about $14,000, is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal, and they refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult for what these poor passengers went through. Yeah. We think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate. <sighs> Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Later, Costa Crociere would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal <laughs> The judge agrees. Costa Crociere is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their the hands judges. of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces he of probably six knows, staff members. He knows Passengers people. Passengers and relatives of the Colonel judge are living that the company has been judge. able to avoid criminal responsibility. Offered is not commensurate. That's bullshit. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. Judges can be corrupt life. too. Come on then. <laughs> Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. It's not they were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. God damn, dude. 
What a hot New mess. attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. Please tell me this, this attorney's not a scam of you. Via email. An elderly woman Is that that one alone, YouTuber? Said, oh. Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Ronai agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd. But oh. is known for having stowaways. Well, so is that the um, lawyer that's so Mr. Ronai <laughs> Get your bitch! Cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. And Luna said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. Who is this? You know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy. Scumbag. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh... This is a huge red flag, Peter. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator. This guy looks like a greaseball. Girl. The next day, Jesus oh no. Christ. Oh, hoy, hoy. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh -huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Oh. Okay, can I speak to the door? <laughs> At first, he was refused. So when I said that he didn't have to file a missing person report, you know what? I couldn't. The boyfriend. I didn't give it to him. That's and hilarious. I, I did too many drugs the day before. The Sorry. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. God, that guy. I saw her today. Oh, Jesus. Oh, really? That guy looks like yeah, a we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh no, the jig was up. Oh, so the really? Yeah, the, the jig is up. It's a miracle. And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from. Why the is this woman and look like in half a flew back to Budapest. Although, don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, <laughs> oh, baby, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum; it's just a neighbour. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess, and then they said, "Hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money." And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. The law firm that never sleeps, call 1 800 664 7. Oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a very bad idea. Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. Get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, thanks. Uh. Gregorio de Felpe, the naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso, became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. And when the captain chickened out, DeFelco was there to admonish him. Every time I hear music like that, I think of that the group radio, Creed. He called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. <laughs> I love this guy. You, uh, you get your punk ass back on there, you bitch ass motherfucker. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public Good for you. So corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being printed it by the end of the week. It said 35 people died, but at least it could have been a lot more. In September 2014, without warning, DeFelco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Hear what I said, he'd been demoted. DeFelco said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFelco was Chris Furioso, and there was public speculation that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, 
Oh, uh, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers. And no, you're just jealous that. And professionalism. Oh, you're yeah, a punk bitch, too. It's hard to know too. what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said, Buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. I'm the governor. Good for him. Good for you. Screw that guy who tried him. His boss. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. <laughs> so the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. In the historian. By July of that year, the Napoli. house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote How? a book with this journalist from Rye Ugh. Magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But God damn it, he must have Mom, some kind of charisma spy. going on. Because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with the some kind of monster in his pants or this something. Dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. So, he's married. Five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those Scumbag. plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He touched me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given <laughs> suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good deal. Good deal. House arrest. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. Then was other guests on the bridge? Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped again, and he hasn't been found since. After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony, then Sil uh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial, so let's just go straight to the verdict. Yeah, I only have an X amount of battery life over here. Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. That's it? But wait, that's it. There's still the appeal. For 35 lives, the appeal that's trial it. Begins. And you have a nerve to appeal, appeal, bitch. Surprise! Rejected. Okay. So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. Damn and right. Verdict on the final appeal. Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Scatino oh, he only got 16, but he was outside he jail for 26 for initially. So that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, he was finally... See how the judicial system himself. is? Five years later, he's in a cell. The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. 
The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That same weekend of the towing, wow. Scutino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. You have the audacity to take a picture with this man, knowing what happened, you two dumb bitches. Anyway... So Fuck these all these people, the things man. that I remember from the Costa Concordia. That sweet maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella. Well, it's time to return you. From whence you came. From whence you came. From whence you came. Six quick things. One, NordVPN, good product, check them out. Number two, there's a new video on the second channel. You probably didn't see it because it was temporarily... I just did that one fashion, I just did that fashion, I fashion, I just three, that fashion seen video. The second channel before, it was it good. Go. It's a different type of content, but we put a lot of production into it. It's not just offcuts. Four, there are a couple of secret channels as well, but I ain't telling you where they are. Five, no more 45 minute videos on the main channel. Back to 10 to 15 minutes and more of them. Six, there's a Q&A coming out next week on incognito mode. It's got a ton of detail that we had to cut for the sake of brevity and will no doubt feature a ton He has secret channels that he doesn't want. How are you going to promote? It. Thank you. Spicy. How are you going to say you have some secret channels and not promote it? That fucking bitch. No. Wow. Wow. Well, before my battery cuts out, let me try to be quick with this. Fuck that dude. And, uh... Those people who try to scam because people fucking died. So he, so he was he, twenty six years. He sentenced him. He only got sixteen for thirty five deaths. Wow. Okay. And it took him five years, over five years, to finally get his ass in a cell. That's the judicial system for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very eye-opening experience. This is, a, uh, this is the reason why I don't go on cruises. I don't want to be going anywhere. I, I, I'm not Olympias, Olympic swimmer. I could doggy paddle, maybe. That's the reason why I want to be on a freaking cruise ship. And this is a good example right here. And this bitch, this dumb bitch right here. Oh my god, Dominique Fuckface, whatever her last name was. Fuck her too. Oh my god, these people. God, I hate people sometimes. Anyway, it was good. It was very educational. I hope you guys were, were, were thought this was fun. I thought it was fun. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Comment. Hit that notification. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Whatever. The end. Yeah, it's the end, okay?